I received this Seth Thomas OG today in the mail. This one belongs to Joseph from New York. He recently acquired it from a local antique shop in his hometown. He wants me to get it up and running. It's got a nice rosewood veneered case. Appears to be all original. Typical OG pendulum. A lot of these are dented and beat up. Not a bump or scratch on this one. It's a fine example. I'll give it a swing even though the weights aren't in it. The cast iron weights look to be original. The rosewood veneer has a few edge chips in it. The paint on the dial is in a degraded state. The label is in rough shape as well. I see the bottom of the case has some loose paint chips on it, probably from the dial. The bond between the paint and the metal face is failing. This molding for the glass tablet has had some rough treatment. Here the tablet reverse painting has a chip in it. Looks like it's from the suspension rod rubbing on it. All these OG clocks had a tie down fastener on them when new. It's that J hook fastener down there on the bottom of the case. A string or rubber band in it and connected to the suspension spring rod is all it takes. The suspension rod has also damaged the label right here.
label is in bad shape. They used high acid paper on them. When exposed to moisture, they turn yellow and degrade quickly. get this suspension rod off. It's got a kink in it, but will still function as designed. This fastener holding the front plate on looks odd. And this fastener as well. There's no screw slot in them. The gold gilt has some odd circular swirl marks in it. I've seen patterns similar to these before on these movements. Could be some type of manufacturing variation in their plating process back then. Almost like there was bubbles or oil contamination on the brass plates. Processes back then weren't as controlled as they are today. The dark areas is tarnish. It's where the bare brass has been exposed to oxygen. Could be the lead and zinc alloy in the brass that's oxidizing. Before I disassemble, I'll see if the gong side is functioning. Yep, it spins freely, nothing jammed. The time side is a different story. The cable has ridden up over the pulley on the time side. It's jammed solid against the second wheel gear teeth. Judging from the cobwebs and remains of critters, looks like this clock has been sitting around someplace for a long time. Remove the wood bracket. Just a couple of J-hooks holding it in. I'll need to use a pair of pliers on these two bottom fasteners. They look like a brass stud or pillar mount that's been crudely modified. They modified this one too long and installed these shims so the front plate would be tight. This shim looks like a part of an electrical connector. Not sure what this shim used to be. Maybe another electrical connector, but it doesn't belong here. It's got some lettering on it. it says British made on it. Well, someone butchered these to get them to work as fasteners. At least they didn't butcher the movement. This cord is really jammed in here tight.
Lots of dust and rust. There's some more on the pivot holes. This movement has never had any bushings installed. Amazing. It's not all that worn for its age. Looks like it was run a little recently. These steel trundles are shiny where they worked against the brass gear teeth. front plate is tarnished inside as well. The pivots are in great shape. Nothing a little polishing won't clean up. I'll need to de-rust every part before I start. Almost like it's been sitting for years in an attic or barn. Well cleaned and it's almost back together. Nice, the wheels spin freely. The gong lever. The four front plate screws are all mismatches. I looked in my stock and surprisingly no matches. I figure it's quicker to modify these than to hunt some down. The threads are in good shape. One is just too long and they both need screw heads put on them. I'll match them to the other two screws.
cut them to length. Now the screw slots, using the surface table. Nice! Once the brass oxidizes, they'll easily pass as originals. The Verge. The pallet impulse surfaces of the Verge need a drop or two of oil. The instructions mention these surfaces should be checked and oiled several times a year. Now to get the movement in the case. Get the gong hammer adjusted while it's easy to get at. It's working just fine. A nice 1800s Seth Thomas OG.